Do you have a hard time? Because I'm in the construction, like we're both in. We're like twins. We're, we are. We, we're, I'm much younger and yeah. funnier. Okay, but, no, no, let's but, not but, debate it. But it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to debate it. I'm just saying I know you, you know where you get your good looks at. <laughs> <laughs> From the family. I always got to find a, a fun way. To, I have no idea how to introduce you. I have... Because I know you. And... Like, very well. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's like one thing you never do. They always say don't film with kids and pets, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you're my uncle. My favorite. The other uncles don't watch, right? No, it's too late now. They all know. <laughs> because you said it yesterday at, at the, what's call it there? So if that's going on TV, you said that at Discount Flooring. Oh, yeah, oh but you're my favorite uncle. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, well. But just because I filmed that. Mm -hmm. In the we met at the discount mm -hmm. store, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we put it in. So now you've said it. I've said it twice. But you know what? I don't even think our other my other uncles and people know how to turn on the computer. That's okay. So it's, it's Everybody okay. knows it's true. Yeah, right? yeah, it's true. We are. We are a lot the same. There's nobody that makes me laugh more than you. My wife will say, "You don't think I'm funny? Just think of me like Ronnie." Is that ruins everything? <laughs> I would have met you. <laughs> we're, not going, we're not going there. <laughs> that is not how it gets brought up. What is she trying to say? No, 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 no never mind. Does she trying to say that my tatas are too big? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's red now. He's oh, blushing. man. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking Jen is going to watch this. And, uh, okay. <laughs> Let's... Okay, we won't. We we'll keep that. <laughs> yeah, they are. Are you how you you uh, on any kind of diet or anything for that? <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, eat whatever you want. <laughs> so, Ronnie, Uncle Ronnie, can I? I uh, gotta sure. buy Uncle Ronnie. I don't You're, care. You are a lot older than me, obviously. Yes. <laughs> I'm just I'm teasing you. But doesn't look like it. No. So <laughs> <laughs> we have a purpose to this. So you're my mom's brother. How many in the family? Nine. Yeah. I know them all. I'm just for the viewers. Are we on? Yeah, we're on. Oh, we're oh. going. We're going. <laughs> we're we're uh, you did <laughs> It's gone. It's on. Okay, perfect. Now I have to put that clip in. Which that clip? I ran into you in the discount. Yeah. In wow. the filming, our, our weekly vlog. Do you watch our weekly vlog? Yeah. yeah. Do you enjoy it? Yeah, I do. I we're do. trying to get it more structured. So we're going to follow two or three houses. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. From start to finish. But there'll still be the fun in it. You can't lose the fun. Well, he, well you can't because I, uh, I, I'm kind of tired of the HGTV, <clears throat> same thing, same hamburger. Mm, yeah. They find mm. a house they can't. It's, it's terrible. They fix it. They finally sell it and everything's great. And you do that over and over and over. Yeah, yeah. Do you watch those shows? Uh, some of them. But it's like you say, after a while you watch so much and then, uh, well, you've seen it all. Yeah. Like, uh, it's the same thing. What I like to watch is I like to watch uh, uh, beach, like beach. people search, searching for beach houses and stuff oh, like that. Oh, the beach houses. I, well, lo I love that. Well, I love you know that. what I like about it? It's not the people, it's the houses. Well, the exactly. Properties. I like the properties. That's yeah. what I like too. I just, uh, I just purchased a property in Capelé, a uh, cottage. You did? Yeah, uh, three weeks ago. So Capelé mm -hmm. is. You tell me that's uh well that's where we're all from. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's where I was born and raised. Yes. Angela also. Yes. Uh, we is been, your wife? Yes, Angela yeah. is my wife. Yeah. And she was born and raised there too. And we've been we've been gone from Capelé for thirty four years. So we decided that we were gonna buy a cottage and go back and start enjoying it again, enjoying the beach. Well, you're you're getting older now. You should. Well, Capelé is for the people who are listening or or watching. It's a beach town. It is. Yeah. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it has been voted uh, number five. Uh, one of the best beaches in Canada. Okay, well, somebody's going to come here to New Brunswick because I'm big on, during these podcasts, I'm always going to throw in where you should come to New Brunswick because we don't get a lot of publicity for tourism and we, New Brunswick's beautiful. 
Oh, we got the rocks. The beaches are incredible. So, mm. what's the beach in Capilay somebody should go to if they come here? The uh, sandy beach, uh, Gangan Beach, La Boeto Beach. Yeah. Uh, they're all sandy beaches. And they stretch out for probably, I'd say, six to eight kilometers. And they're clean uh, sand, and beautiful. Uh, clean and beautiful. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a great place to be. It's uh, uh, The food is excellent. They're known for their fried clams. There's several restaurants in Capelé that are known for fried clams. Yeah, I still drive uh, down and get some. Uh, yeah, I do too. I always take the older when I go back through Capelé. Well, by, you can't uh, anymore. You can't? No. Well, no, but you can go through town. You can't just... You have to turn back, right, and get back on the old highway? Yeah. Well, the old highway, the bridge has been washed out with uh, really? Hurricane Dorian. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's what that's been washed out. But they're working on a temporary bridge right oh, okay. now. So hopefully by the summer. So now you'll you be able to go through there. there. <laughs> you don't have to feel bad. You can still go for Friday time. You just have to take the highway. <laughs> so that's not why we're here. We've established... Funniest favorite? Uh, do you enjoy? I got. Can you answer a question? Sure. Because a lot of people, uh, do you make everywhere you go? Do you enjoy communicating, talking with people, making them laugh and smile? Love it. Me too. I'm I'm known for it. Uh, we were in Cuba, and my kids keep saying, "I think you know somebody everywhere." Because I talk to everybody. Yes. And you want to make them laugh, right? Yeah. Me too. You're, I always call you the Acadian Jerry Seinfeld. And I posted that on social media. It's great. But people I, uh, often, they don't know how to take it nowadays, I find, because they don't, people don't communicate the same anymore. Do you find? A little of bit? Of course. The younger generation? Of course. Uh, I mean, if you, and it's just the way the generations are going, I guess. But if you look... We didn't have anything to communicate with except go out and have fun and talk to people. Well, now with social media, with your phones and everything else, I mean, they can be sitting one next to each other and they're texting each texting other instead other. of talking to each other. And I watched a program on this week that they're finding now that it's a problem that people have a hard time communicating now. Well, when you liked a girl when you were a teenager, what did you have to do? You had to walk up to her you doctor. You had to walk up to her. <laughs> and you were sweating, freaking out. You may even shat in your pants a little. And you had to look her in the eyes. And say, hey. No, I was never that nervous. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was always the confident one. Sure, fine, whatever. <laughs> I'm not answering. Okay. What, what, what do you have for a phone right now? Uh, an iPhone 6 or 7, but it's a company phone. Um, before I got the company phone, I had a flip phone, and it was great. Like, didn't know texting, no writing the book, or somebody called me, answer, hi, how are you? Get what had to be done and hung, hang up, and that's it, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> this now, to me, is like, uh, you have to write a book on it. Yeah, it, do, you, do you remember when the cell phone came out? Yes. I do, too. It looked like a big uh, size 9 shoe. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember when it kind of transformed, though? Uh I don't know if it was Nokia Blackberry kind of changed it all a little bit. The Blackberry came out. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was supposed to save us all time. Like, this is going to be great. You're going to save your time. You don't have to drive to the office or you don't even get your messages. That's not what we're here to talk about cell phones. No. I, I hate my cell phone. Like, I hate it. Like, you can't go away on vacation now. It's people, if you don't reply to them in three minutes. Yeah. Well, I'm dealing with someone else. Cuba's great, though. Because it doesn't work there? Most of the time. A cruise ship, it doesn't work either. Yeah. So. But then I have anxiety and, and cell phone withdrawals. It's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem, Ronnie. I need help. <laughs> uh, add on another few years. You'll get yeah, rid of that I, problem. I'm getting you're, you're not going to want it. So what do you do for work? That's what, Let's get into what <laughs> we're here for. Uh, I work for a company that uh, we do a uh, fire flood restoration. It's Pure Clean of Moncton. It's a company based out of the U.S. That's where it first started. Um, my nephew uh, opened up probably about seven years ago, and I was self-employed installing floors and that, and he kind of asked me several times to come in and uh, work with him and help him and that, and so... Said I was going to try it for years, and this is six years later. So, yeah, we do fire flood restoration. Yeah, you'd be good. But well, don't, don't you worry, though, that you're going to run out of jobs? Never. Never. <laughs> never. <laughs> is, is the climate changing? Oh, big time. 
like even in the last six years since I've been doing this, um, I've seen like the the ice diving. We're yeah, getting a I, lot I never more. had that before. I never had ice diving like yeah. we had it before. We're getting a lot more ice diving in the last two years than when I first started. Like we were getting a nice diving here and there, and even um, above ground flooding, which is well. Let's go. Let's stop at the ice diving. Explain to me. For someone who has no idea about construction, what ice damming is? Well, ice damming is is when you get uh, a huge, uh, well, it doesn't have to be huge. You get some snow on your roof. Yeah. If you don't clean off the first foot or two feet of your roof, well, as soon as that melts, the water comes down, hits your gutters, it's going to freeze. Well, after that first freeze, the next melt, the water's got no place to go. And it goes back up under the shingles. Exactly. So it comes yeah. and it piles there, and when it's got no place to go, it starts backing up underneath the shingles. People say, well, geez, I got a brand new roof last year. Why is this happening? It has nothing to do with your nothing. roof. It's the water's just going to back up, and it's going to find every little creek that it can, yeah. every little uh, uh, nail, uh, like through the nails and everything, and it, it's going to creep in. Well, technically, water sunk the Titanic. <clears throat> Frozen? Yeah. Like, it's it, powerful. It, exactly, exactly. And in the last... Even, yeah, I'd say three years, we're getting a worse lot. Worse. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to get snow on the roof, and it would stay cold. Mm -hmm. We used to play outside, ice hockey on the outside ponds all year long, never even think about it melting. Yeah. But now, we used to get snow on the roof. It would sit there till March, and when it melted, it melted. But now it's melting in the mid of, middle of January, and within two hours, the temperature drops, and it freezes. Exactly. Like super quick, yeah. and it's causing major problems. Well, just look at our storms. Just yeah. look at the storms we had this year. Snow, freezing rain, rain, freezing rain, snow again. Yeah. It's just, and that's the climate we got. So you got thawing, you got freezing. It's causing ice damming, and with all the water, and we're, we're getting a lot of rain in the middle of winter with a lot of snow that we never used to have. Yeah. And once it, it's like that, that's what causes your, your, your backup and your ice damming. What is above ground flooding? Well, it, it's, it's basically this almost the same problem as ice damming, except you have it above ground. It, it's at, at the level of your basement. So you're getting snow, rain, it causes ice. And then when you get a big tar, a lot of rain, the water's got nowhere to go. It can't drain because the ground's frozen solid. The, the, there's usually ice. So it pools around your house and it pools in your window wells and it comes in through windows. And, and they'll even, like normal, sometimes you can have a hairline crack in your foundation that won't leak. Yeah. But if you got enough water above ground, it's going to find its way in. Yeah. If it so, can't make it to the drain tile. Exactly. So every house or should have at the bottom of the foundation, six or eight feet down or whatever, has a tile, like a, how would you describe that? A drainage system to take water away out to the city exactly. sewer or exactly. somewhere. So if it can't get there, it's going in your basement. Exactly. And to the point that uh, I believe when I started, there was no coverage for above ground flooding. And now there is. Now you can buy it. So six years ago, how many claims would you have had in one year, uh, one winter for above, above ground flooding? Oh, geez, I don't know. Uh, we really didn't keep track, but we did get some, but they weren't covered. So most people would either take care of the damage themselves or just get us to clean the, the water damage yeah. and do the rebuild themselves. But there's definitely more now. Oh, for sure. For sure. Definitely more. Who pays for this in the long run? Well, it's always going to be the consumer. I think we all do. Yeah, you're, we're all paying for Your insurance it. rates are, I, I think they were talking about this year, the insurance rates here. No, I do not accept. It's no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> you'll just pay your regular rate and we'll see what happens when something happens. <laughs> <laughs> so do, do uh, you know what I do, and it's probably a problem, is uh, I'm in a rush to buy insurance and I just go buy it. I don't even, do you know where I'm getting at? Yeah, yeah, and I, I think a lot of people uh, do that. You just go out and, and you buy insurance, and you may assume that you have everything, but you, it, you should be checking your policy, especially especially for flooding right now. Um, in, in the climate change, we're definitely going to keep getting more ice damming. 
we're going to keep getting more above ground flooding. Uh, it's just we go from, like, I've, in six years, we usually have two busy seasons. And it's usually around uh, October when you start getting the heavy rainfalls and all that. You're going to get a lot of flooding. Mm -hmm. And we usually get it in, in March, April, when... Starts to thaw yeah, and yeah, getting yeah. rained at. So that's our two busy season. And usually you'll get a, a whole bunch of claims and it's going to keep you going for quite a while. This year, Dorian was in September. That was really early. And that was a hurricane. That was a hurricane, yeah, that was bad. So, and that's stuff that we're not used to seeing. Yeah. Like down here. I never heard of hurricanes in my life. <clears throat> no. Until like 10 years ago. I heard of them. Yeah. Right there were in movies, but yeah. I we now we every year we got to watch a hurricane tracker, see what's coming up there. Yeah. Uh, I know I was called out on Dorian. Uh, first call probably came in at about 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so I was up and driving around and checking. And I've this is the first time I see this. Like I was down towards Shidiac, uh, Barishwa, well, where I was talking. Where Those are all little towns around Moncton, yeah, where we live. Yeah, we're, we're on, it's on the coast, going yeah. down towards Capilain, That It's on the... And, uh, that bridge that I was talking about that's washed out, mm -hmm. well, I drove by there probably 10 o'clock in the morning, and the wharf was completely destroyed. Uh, there's probably about four boats sitting on the guardrail to the road. Like, they're, they were pushed up. Yeah. The water and the waves pushed it up, and they're sitting there. And uh, th their boats are everywhere. And Capelli was the same thing where I bought my cottage. I was I went down there, and there's boats sitting on the side of the road, really from the marina that were pushed all the way up. Yeah, I've never seen that. Like it's it's the first time I see that. Well, we see it on the news because if if uh, <clears throat> in relation where we are, uh, we're above Maine, so Boston, New York, Boston, Maine, us, right? Yeah, and we tail out over out into the ocean a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and I mean, I've never seen it. I've never seen it in our area, yeah. in this part, that we have that much damage in one storm and so early. Usually we're going to get wind and rain. It's in October, and that's what's going to cause the damage of, of uh, like, your property, your house, and all that. And that's where we come in, and that's where we get all the claims. But to see this this year was amazing. I got footage of uh, a few places I went out and... and uh, just on the outskirts of Shidiac, that the waves came over the water break but couldn't go back. So there's two feet of water sitting around the houses, and, and we'll go where's it going to go? Yeah, it's got no place to go. Okay, so I got to evaporate. Or if or I'm getting if I'm getting my insurance, <clears throat> and the guy the insurance agent goes, "Do you want to pay the extra twenty bucks? You know, for a sewer backup?" Oh, for I sure. Say yes. Yes. But what about now? You talked about another ice damming. Yeah. And uh, above ground. Flooding. Yes. What do I ask for for that? Most of the time, uh, and, and I could be wrong, but I think most of the time that the ice diving, it's usually covered in your policy. But uh, check. Still something to check. Above ground flooding, you, you should ask for it. And you should check your caps because there's there, there are caps on insurance. Yeah. Uh, you can buy an insurance and they're going to cap you off at 10 grand. I guess I think of the deductible more than anything. But you could check your cap too. Well, your cap, let's if you have a finished basement with, I don't know, two bedrooms and a TV room and, and you're capped yeah. off at 10 grand. Your demo could be three, four. Oh, much more. Yeah. By the time, depending on what came in, like if it's a category one, two, or three uh, water, yeah. uh, like category three is a sewer backup. So there's a lot of bacteria. There's a different procedures to, to taking care of that and it's more expensive and most of the time if you get a category three your your furniture is not savable it's got to go so you could have without even touching your structure you could have almost 10 grand worth yeah, of just damage like, just in your furniture depending on what you got down there and so check your caps yes you should you should yeah it's it's important because we're it's more and more. We're going to see it more and more. And yeah. uh, it's just a fluctuation in temperature. It's climate change. People deny it. 
is there. Oh, it's I see, I see it every day. Like, it's, it's, it's there, yeah. That's what keeps me working. <laughs> <laughs> the, way, the way I work is if they think there isn't clarity. Spray your aerosol oh. cans. <laughs> <laughs> Slow it down. I don't even know if that's a thing anymore, aerosol yeah. cans. Yeah. Uh, do you have a hard time? Because I'm in the construction, like we're both in. We're like twins. We're, we are. We, we're, I'm much younger. And yeah. funnier. Okay, but, no, no, let's but, not but, debate it. But it's okay. Uh, I'm not going to debate it. I'm just saying I know you, you know where you get your good looks at. <laughs> <laughs> From the family. Yeah, there you go. Do you have a hard time getting uh, employees? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Getting yeah, employees do. that... Uh, yeah. It's not, a, it's not to offend anybody. No, no. It's, and, and it's... it's a different culture. Different culture, and it's, I, I think the families are smaller. And uh, What do you mean by that? Well, in the baby boomers, there were 7 to 14 kids per family. And, yeah. and Late, every, Latex wasn't invented yet, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay, keep going, keep going. That's another podcast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I can see your mind. I, I, I don't, I, I I don't want to open up that can. Okay. We're good. Let's but there were several other reasons was, to it. Yeah. Like, there was only three channels on TV. <laughs> and we didn't have cell phones. <laughs> and we didn't have it's cell true. phones. It's true. Yeah, exactly. What are we to do tonight? You had to communicate. What? Yes. Yeah, exactly. You had to look each other in the eyes. As soon as you look at, you know, in yeah. the, it, it's over. It's, it's yeah. like you're in trouble. Okay, let's back to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jen, I'm sorry. It's my wife. <laughs> it's not my fault, Jed. <laughs> there's some there's some stuff he picked up on his own. <laughs> uh, it uh, yeah. So a whole bunch of kids. Well, it, it, if you look back uh, in the baby boomers, th- th- there was anywhere from seven to fourteen, sixteen kids in the family. Yeah, and the majority of those kids were going into trades. Uh, now our families consist of one, two, maybe three. Three is a big family. Four is huge. Oh yeah, yeah. And the majority of the kids now are going into computers or other stuff. They're staying away from construction or, or trades, and it's too bad because uh, tradesmen in a few years are going to be making big, big bucks they're because they're going to be starting. such demand for them. Such demand for them. I've. I myself was into flooring, and I installed flooring for 32 years. Uh, most of the guys that were into flooring were my age and older. So we're all starting to die off and getting out of yeah. it. Buying cottage and, by the beach and saying, see ya. Yeah, exactly. But I don't know if you noticed, but this is a, 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 a sub-trade that I find that I really have a hard time getting somebody to do flooring. Yeah. I can get them, but you have to wait and wait. And it's, a, it's so. We're, we're getting guys and we're training them. We got some really good people. But uh, my whole, you want to give me, want me to give you my spiel on why young people should do the trades? Sure. I was, why you should have said sure quicker. I'm almost feeling like you don't want to hear it. I was, no, it's just, like you don't even care. I was just waiting for you to shoot do, it out. Do I even do I need to be here? No. <laughs> no, I'm uh, just, no. I'm <laughs> no, no. I'm just joking. I personally feel, and I think you said it, they're gonna make a ton of money. Oh, Not sure. a ton of money, but you're gonna make a really good living. You're gonna be happier. Why do you think somebody doing the trades opposed to sitting at a computer all day is gonna be happier? Well, you're out there, you're communicating with people. Uh, you're out in the fresh air, depending on what, what trade you're in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you got the satisfaction. I still love flooring. The satisfaction at the end of the day, this is what I made. This is what I've... I love it. This, uh, and you, I've, I've, I've never lost that. I, yep. That's one of the biggest things that I miss, not being into flooring, is at the end of the day, look and say... You know what? I did that. That looks sharp. It looks That's awesome. Yeah. And I had a problem with that corner, but I made it work. Yeah. Now look at it. Yeah. So you have sat- job satisfaction, a lot of time, and you're working with your hands, you're bending over, you're lifting, you're, you're working. Exactly. You're working. So the body's happier. You, you're going to make decent money. And I'm not kidding. Young people, that should get into the trades. Uh, you, there's people who will train you too. The thir- you know what? Another one that kind of gets left out, you can c- control somewhat your own schedule. Couldn't you not? When you did flooring, yes. When I were when I was self-employed, I'd average uh, ten to twelve weeks per year being off. Yeah, 
And it wasn't like I'm taking a week here or taking a week there. It just, you know what? There's a long weekend coming up. I think I'm going to take Thursday and Friday, and I'll have Monday. I was self-employed. I just worked my schedule around to make sure that I had nothing booked. And Yeah, so you can control <clears throat> your life a little bit more. Exactly. You're not owned by some, I want to say, but manager above manager above manager to, mm -hmm. you know, in an office setting where you're breathing through, uh, mm -hmm. like, all exchange air because you're locked in a building. Nothing against that. But there's some real perks to oh, learning the trades. And you, you decide your payroll. Yeah. Like, if you decide that you want to work uh, 60 hours a week, that's your choice. Yeah. Or if you decide you want to work 30 hours a week, that's your choice. You decide for somebody who's self-employed. And if you're going in a trade, it's not hard to be self-employed. No, it's not. Like, and you're going to, if you're any good, you're going to be busy. You're going to be busy. You'll be busy. And I'm willing to work with, even for me, if a guy, for whatever reason, the young people don't want to get up early. I'm an early, like I, I wasn't always, but do you get up early? Usually between 5.30. Oh, I'm not doing that. Uh, um, and, and you know what? Once you get used to it, Saturday, Sunday. You're still getting up. I'm, I'm awake at 5.30. <laughs> Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll go sit at Deluxe with a bunch of friends. We'll have breakfast. And you, deluxe is... Okay, I don't want to get into it. I like A&W for yeah. breakfast. Well, it just happens that I have a bunch of friends uh, that, go uh, there. that work in the construction that Saturday mornings. Yeah. They all go to Deluxe, so... I'll get up and go to the locks, have breakfast, and Sundays, well, you, you walk around, go to the gym. Uh, go to the gym. Go to the and gym. And you can get so much done. But my point was, if I have somebody that's really good, they're amazing at, at flooring, or whatever it is, they're they're amazing. And if they want to start at 10 a.m., 10 a.m., and work till 7, 6 p.m., or whatever, as long as they get the job done, it's good. It's not like you got to punch a clock in. No. At chink, chink. Every morning at 8 a.m., you know, you're not, you can fluctuate the schedule. Yeah. But I, I still think the, big, the biggest part of, of uh, trades is, is the satisfaction of your work. Yeah. You get to see it. This is something that I don't get to see now because I, I project manage. So I go in the houses, we see the end result. But it's the other guys. Come and do did. some flooring for us. You, you know, it'll be fine. I have been doing flooring <laughs> on, on the oh, side oh, here. Does anybody, <laughs> does anybody know? Nobody watches. I, nobody will see this. I just, I like it. I, I miss it. Yeah. I like it. I still like doing it. Yeah. Uh, my wife, Angela, like if I'll get a hardwood job, mm -hmm. she'll come work with me. She loves doing hardwood. Yeah. And she installs with me. And well, I got a house we're putting hardwood in right now. Yeah. Real hardwood. Can yeah. you believe it? Real hardwood. Why are people not putting in hardwood? Uh, like in pre-finished or, or finished hardwood? Uh, I find where it's laminate, 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 laminate. Yeah. Even big houses. Yeah. I don't know if it's because it's more modern looking or the dogs don't scratch it. I think that's what it is. But you still got the same problem. Yeah. Uh, if, you get, if you get water damage... Uh, Hardwood is much easier to fix because you can cut out a board, just replace and it. And in five years, you can still sand it down and stain it or yeah, do exactly, something. Exactly. I, I like hardwood, but it's a big uh, debate. It, it, yeah. It's, uh, it's a big debate, and it's, uh, it can be expensive. Yeah. And it's a slower install, so it takes more time. But bottom result is you got a nice floor in that. But. So the kids, they should be getting in the trades. They should. Yes. Should. And one thing I missed, uh, got a sponsor, Liberty Utilities. Do you have natural gas at home? Uh, I tried. Did they not have it there yet? They didn't have it there yet. They're getting there. It's coming. Well, they two months or six months after I applied for it, Remy built his house. Yeah. And they went down to his house and they passed right in front of mine. I'm thinking... I just brought a brand new furnace and I wanted to go natural oh, gas. Oh well, oh so you, well, I'll, let let's call them. Yeah, let's call them. <laughs> but I got a brand new furnace. Oh. <laughs> no, they're growing. It's yeah, uh, they're I know. great. No, I, I if uh, if I would have, I had them at my apartment buildings. Yeah, and it, it was good. I and the price it. is coming down. I know there's all these rumors about natural gas, but I uh, <clears throat> one thing, what was I going to say? You said the price was coming down. Price was coming down, but I was going to say that, something else. That, that happens with the gray, graying gray of the hair. hair. Yeah. But it's because more people are getting it. Yeah. So as more people get yeah. it, 
the the better it is. I was gonna say something else, I can't remember. Uh, I like, like I, I like it. Like if I think if I if I could have got it for my because I wanted to put a, a natural gas furnace, yeah. um, and I would have probably went with a stove in that because I like cooking much better with gas. With gas, then I find you got more control. Yeah, your water heats up a lot quicker yeah. too. Yeah. But uh, what I was going to say is, the province needs uh, pipe, uh, gas fitters too. So if you want to learn a trade, there's gas fitters. They need them. There's a demand for gas fitters. Another trade that's... Uh, there's that's so many big, trades. There's so many trades, and it's just going to get worse. It it's is. It's going to get worse. So people in trades are going to make yep. big bucks they will. the road because and they're be going to they're gonna be such in demand. Because yeah. not, not everything in life is money. Like, I know everybody yeah. thinks it's money. It's not. If you have money and you're depressed all the time, you know, you get if you're working with your hands, you're much happier. It's not the answer to everything. But you're well, much happier. Well, I think it's it's uh, it's a physical aspect of it too because you're working physically. You're not sitting. Not so you're moving all the time, yeah. and it makes you feel better. I'll tell you, in the last six years, I probably put on about twenty five pounds. No, no yeah. way. Oh, yes. No, you, no way. Oh uh, yes, you look great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I get a flood. I get a Y stamp. Who do I call right away? Do I call? Uh, restoration company like yourself? Sure. Or do I call the insurance company? Well, you can call the insurance company, but I f if it was me, I'd be looking for somebody to take care of the, the problem right away, and I'm going to call my insurance. How do I know that insurance company is going to cover you? That's where you should be looking at your policy. Beforehand? Yes, because every, every policy holder has the right to hire whoever they want in their house. Really? Yes. Because sometimes they would maybe not, and I'm not going to not going to bash insurance companies. No. Make you think that they get to decide everything. Yeah, but it's not true. Not true. Yeah. No. Um, it's your policy. It's your house. You have the right to have a. It's got to be a certified uh, restoration company, though. Okay. Uh, they do ask that we get certified, and when I started this, I had to go back to school. hadn't been to school for several years. Had to go yeah. back and. Uh, get certified, but uh, yeah, but you have the right to bring in whichever company they do have preferred. You don't necessarily have to go with the preferred. You can choose another company. So okay. you just made eye contact with me, and it's awkward now. <laughs> 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 okay, so if you get it, you, nobody <clears throat> wants it to happen, but it looks like it's happening more and more. Mm -hmm. Just the way every gl uh, global everything's happening with the weather. So thanks for the advice. Hey, no problem. My and if, pleasure. if you're young, what should you be doing? You should be getting into a trade. Get into trades. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for coming in. Thank you. Go make eye contact with your wife. <laughs> 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 See you tomorrow.